Welcome to Cage Minds. I'm Micah Frankel. We're joined by a familiar face. Catherine Renee Lindenmuth is joining us today to talk about her debut with Golden Boy Boxing, getting on a card with one of the most notable promotions in all the sport. Let's start off there. Right. I'm so excited for this opportunity. I'm like, really excited. <laughs> like you and coach are fielding offers you and coach Rosales you're getting these in and, and you see something like golden boy come across get that email what does that mean what's that reaction like to you guys honestly for for me it's a test you know it's a really big test for me to be able to be on the bigger stage the bigger lights and face a different opponent like a very different opponent. And I mean, they're sending me out there because I'm from New Mexico. Don't worry about her. So, I mean, we're just we're just really excited to really show up, show out, um, represent New Mexico. I'm, you know, definitely representing my hometown of Bosque Farms and, you know, the city of Los Lunas and try to bring some light that we're serious down here. We may be way over here, but we're serious. You had two fights locally as a professional and then took the big step, a challenge to go out of state to Salt Lake City with a fight out of town. What was that experience like? Honestly, it was so exciting. It was nerve wracking having to travel, worry about making weight when you get there. I've never understood fluctuations and in tra flight and traveling. Um you know, I was nervous and I was ready for, for just people not cheering me on, <laughs> people not being there for me. And, you know, I had to take a, take a hard, hard uh, loss that we, we felt maybe, maybe I should have just finished it because there, you know, there was discrepancies basically in the video of who really thought won that fight, but how to take the loss to turn around and turn it to something, you know, better that I've, I've got to, I've got to work harder and sell it much, much harder. Yeah. So how does it change the mentality now also hitting the road, going to someone else's promotion and how do you utilize what you learn in Salt Lake on the 23rd? To be honest, I know I'm going out there and they expect me to lose. They expect her to dominate. Um, I mean, she's five and four. She's a heavy hitter. Um, it's you can hear it um, on on a, on any of her videos. You can just hear that that punch hit. And the thing is, is she's just never met me. And um, I'm gonna go out there knowing that that crowd is all her crowd. And I know that there are people willing and wanting to travel with us. And we're going to put on a show and we're going to show them what I'm about and highlight me as a fighter, as a mother. Um, I'm 33 and that's not stopping me. And it only goes up from here. So, I mean, basically, we're just trying to um, it's like a it's like a dialing it up mentality. Like there's no days off. There's no break in focus. Um, we've been looking at this fight for actually a couple weeks before we actually got um, a contract because they wanted to do it sooner. They wanted to actually do it um, like a little bit earlier. And they wanted to, um, I think it was like in January. And we were like, oh, I don't know, that's really soon. And, they, and being able to get the contract in February is just, it's awesome. So we're ready. We're geared and ready. So when you look at Lorraine Villalobos, why were you already kind of setting your sights on her? What inclination did you kind of have that this fight was going to come together? Well, she fights at a lower weight. And I mean, I'm, I, I have no business fighting up higher. I'm, I'm such a smaller fighter. I, that's almost just a little difficult maybe not difficult for me, just, I'm just smaller. Like if I am able to go out to Utah and know I'm at 102 there, like for me to fight at 110 is kind of, 
uh, you know, that's a big stretch. So she, I mean, she fights low. The last person she fought was uh, Yocasta Valle, and she is a champ. And that fight was was a real big champ match. And um, I mean, she proved ten rounds. She can go the distance, and she can handle a world class athlete like with like Yocasta. Um, to come in and you know she took the loss but th I mean that's a feat to to be in that ring with with the world champ I guess it's so bluntly to say it do you feel you're ready to be on that level I do I I think that the readiness needs to come from what you're going to put out in training and I faced hard fighters I spar harder fighters i feel like everybody i have sparred when before i get in the ring it's always more difficult way more difficult than getting in the ring with who i'm with and I, it's a test can i handle it can i handle a different fighter and i think i'm ready um you know my coach and i looked at each other and say and we're like i'll fight anyone he knows i'll get in there i'm not saying no like i'm not gonna deny a fight for anyone you know, but am I ready? And he goes, well, it's going to be a test. Let's see. And I was like, I think I'm ready. I know I'm ready. And at that point is when he knew he's like, okay, we're going to go forward with it. Because if I'm not sold on myself, I'm not going to go out there and sell it to anyone else. And I'm not going to take the W, you know, I'm not going to make it a good fight. I'm going to look silly. In front of you, you have a, a nine fight vet who you just mentioned it has been in the ring with the world champion. Is that all at all a bit daunting as you're having those conversations? Like we know you're a brave soldier, you're stepping up to this challenge, but <laughs> but you can tell us, was it a, a bit daunting? Like, dude, I'm staring at Mount Everest all of a sudden. A little bit, but I guess when you think of Mount Everest, she's 4'11", and so am I. So I'm looking at her straight. And, I mean, I feel like I have that, like, grin when I get in there, like, let's go. Like, I'm so, like, so pumped and, like, like hit me in the face. Let's go. <laughs> that kind of feeling. Like, I don't, I don't actually want to get knocked out, but I'm ready to get in there with her. And, I mean, knowing that, that she's been that far, she just had more fights than me. Like, she's just been in it a little bit longer than me. And I know that she's been down here. I know she's fought on an Albuquerque card. I know she's, um, I, I've seen the people that she's she's gone up against. I was like, you just have more fights than me. I was like, then this is going to be a big year. And I'm ready to get started with a big promotion. I don't want to undersell the local experience, but I almost feel like for some boxers, the transition right away from the amateurs to the pros, still being in the same venues around the same people, it, it doesn't change much. But I'm wondering for you if the contractor or going to Salt Lake, you know, making that big journey and it was a pro fight, a hostile environment, did at that moment, did it feel realer? Did things change for you? Like, I'm really doing this now that I'm a professional athlete? It does because, I mean, I've fought locally. Like a lot of a lot of my amateur fights were very local and to go out to Tulsa, to be honest, going out to Tulsa was more nerve wracking for Nationals Golden Gloves than going out to Utah. I was in a great mindset going out there, like first time ever being able to travel. And I like it. I like traveling. I like to show other people that don't know who I am and to gain fans from another state. And I can tell you, I did. And I gained connections. And I don't know, it's like, it, it was a really good experience. Like it, you worry sometimes, oh, I don't have a lot of people on my side. Just give them a round. Give them, give them a couple rounds to see what you do. Because they're in it to see a great fight. In the end, they want to see the best fighter come out on top. And to put out a good show is putting out everything I have and not leaving anything, leaving anything to waste. You've had some time in between the last fight and this one coming up. Uh, what aspects of your game do you feel like are improving the most? I think I've improved on my pressure. I've definitely improved um, on my, my um, speed on my striking. 
my accuracy and to just letting it go. Um, when you get in there, you can get so tense and you're so excited. And I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a ex cheerleader. Everything is tight. <laughs> and when you're boxing, you can't do that. And it's, I think I've, I really like, we've set sights on things that, you know, you need to improve on this. And I think I've come, you know, just a little bit closer and a little bit closer each month, each week. Um, I've set my goal like 1% change, 1% change every single, every single day. And you're going to start seeing more percentage of change. And then it's going to be a lasting change. And that's, um, I don't know, that's just, I think that's just how I do my mentality. Like, I feel like I've worked on so much. I'm ready to see how much I'm able to put that in the ring. You can work on a lot in the gym, but it's how you push it out in the ring. And how much of a student of the game have you become through this journey? How much film session are you in? How many fights are you watching? Sure, we're watching fights all the time. Even if I'm not watching an opponent, I'm watching, you know, techniques from my coach he's sending me. Um, basic motivation, like, he is the guy in the corner saying, you're messing up right now. You want to look stupid? You need to start doing what I'm telling you so you don't regret tomorrow. That kind of thing, you know, sending me good, you know, a different tactic to do at home because with my kids, I mean, this was basketball season. So I've been everywhere all day for the last two months and it continues into this month. So I've had to modify how I train and what I do at home to how hard and what I actually do in the gym. And we've, I can say I've upped everything. Everything has increased. What is it about Coach Rosales' communication style, his coaching style that you respond to so well? I think, honestly, he's told me some of the things that I know I've, I already have in the back of my head. And I can feel it now. So, like, from what he, from how he speaks to me, I hear him. He doesn't have to elaborate. He already knows I understand. And I'll go, mm-hmm, I got it. And he knows that I feel it not just as he's saying it. I I can feel it as he's seeing it. And I just think we've become a lot more in sync um, up in Utah I, I feel like maybe we were a little bit more disconnected. It was, it was a different area. Um, and I might've been really excited. Like, I can't lie. <laughs> I was really excited to be there. So, you know, getting in that ring might've clouded a lot of bit of hearing, but when I'm listening to my coach now, it's like, we're in sync. I already know what he's going to tell me. Cause I already felt it. I'm already saying it in the fight. And I have to remember to just allow what I've trained to just be let out and, you know, re- be released and do what I know I do best. Because I know I work hard at all of these things. I know I do them well. I just can't. I can't be pulling anything. Everything is out out there. It's it's going to be an, you know, an all out show. For sure. A lifelong cheerleader. We know that you've been in and out of athletics most of your life. How do you start to incorporate the natural athleticism that you have into using it wisely in your boxing, not just using it at a random moment, but using it at the correct moment? Um, the ba- I don't know. The basic thing I could say is uh, when I'm running and training for my, my lung endurance, I know I can run a long time, but I also know when my body starts saying something that if I continue to know I can run a long time and know I'm like, I need to do more, I can injure myself further and hinder me on something else. So like I'm listening not only to how hard I drive because I'm just a hard driver is that I have to listen to my body. So when I feel something, I have to shift something else. And Not showing it has been one of those things in athletics that I feel like for every athlete, it's hard not to show when you're hurt, when you are tired, when you have, when you're frustrated that I've been tagged in the head three times, whatever it is, it's being able to master that emotion 
and to move it like into something more productive because the more I get frustrated or allow it to see that's when my opponent capitalizes and I'd rather be seeing their frustration than them see mine because I don't like hearing from the other camp she's tired see she didn't like that because then they saw it on my face I'm like oh no you're not gonna see my emotion because I feel like that that's a negative like they you know they need to know they can't touch you um even though it might have hurt yeah, that, that might have been a pretty good body shot, but you're not going to see it. Like, I'm not going to show you that it hurt me. And definitely I'm going to push harder so you don't even, like, she'll feel how much harder I can go, not how much I can pull back. February 23rd, we're a couple weeks still out from the fight. But right now, from what you've looked at her, from how you're training, what are your expectations for how this fight's going to look? She is a quick double jab. It's going to be pretty much um, with her. She, she gives pressure, but it's not as fast as I felt like Amanda and I. Like, we're so active all over the place, little bunnies. Um, like, we just went at it. With her, she relies pretty much on that, you know, double jab, trying to hit that hook. But she is, she's a heavy hitter. So she's looking to that for that headshot knockout. She's looking for that KO and to to instinctly be smart about what she's looking for and to not give it to her. I'd basically not give her my head that often to give them a chance to think that I can't continue. Because I know it's a little bit different fighting in a different state. They don't they don't look at the brawling type we do here in New Mexico like let's just keep on going. They're you know, I don't want that fight stopped because I know what I can take, but I I also have a ref that's supposed to keep me safe inside that ring as well. So, I mean, really just knowing it's going to be upbeat, it's going to be, she's going to be hitting heavy, I'm going to go fast, I'm going to get a lot of pressure, that's, that's what I do best, and I have to um, almost give more than I've ever given in every round. Because we've noticed that I'm conserving and I don't need to. I, I, I have like a battery pack that I just at some point switch on and uh, I'm jumping around again. And I have this random bit of energy out of nowhere. So, you know, we've kind of like realized my shortfalls and it's going to be that's where we're going to be bringing it in the ring. It's just going to be really high action. Um, it, I don't think there's going to be a lot of walking, you know kind of eyeing each other down I think it's going to be straight punches like the entire six rounds it's basically going to be lots and lots of punches and bunches (laughs) Catherine Renee Lindemuth as always thank you for the time thanks